the story is all about this incredible night each year where this tribe of cats called the Jellicle Cats come together to decide which cat, which cat gets the chance to be reborn and have a new life. Um, and Judy Dench, who's like the spiritual leader of the cats, who plays Old Deuteronomy, she's the character who, who gets to decide which cat has the most need of this kind of rebirth, renewal. Um, and we see the night through the eyes of Frankie Haywood's cat, Victoria, who, who's abandoned rather brutally at the beginning of the film in a waste ground. And cats emerge and began to feel her out and work out who she is. And she goes on this incredible journey on this special night to discover who's going to be chosen. Lee Hall, uh, who wrote the screenplay with me, you know, we came up with this idea of, uh, of Victoria being going to brutally abandoned at the beginning of the film and left in a, in a waste ground in a junkyard and meeting these jellical cats. And the whole story of the film is her finding out who this community is, who, who the big personalities are, what a special night she's happened upon, which is, you know, what the Jellicle Ball is, uh, what the rules of the world are. And, and so it becomes a kind of coming of age story where we experience um, the world of Jellicle Cats through, um, through her eyes. The question of who is going to perform memory was probably like the most burning question of casting. Um, and, you know, so I'm so excited that Jennifer agreed to do it. And you know she's got the most extraordinary voice, but you know I I know from Dream Girls on what how much she has to offer as an actress too. And you know we went through a, a fantastic rehearsal process, working on the kind of emotional hinterland behind the song and preparing her for the day. And you know I'm sure she was very nervous on the day because it's you kind of know when you're performing something like that what the pressure is. But um, you know she, she gave such an intelligent emotional and uh, incredible performance of it on the day that it, you know, it, it, I, I knew I knew I had the kind of emotional centerpiece of the film on that day. Ian's performance was you know utterly extraordinary and you know I've, I've wanted to work with him all my life um, and to get this chance to work with him in his 80th year in this incredibly special year for him um, uh, was was you know like for me as a director like one of my great dreams and he he is a genius he's extraordinary he's a wonderful man and a wonderful person and there was something incredibly moving about him playing Gus the theatre cat uh, and effectively evoking through this character a, a life on the stage um, um, and and Gus's um, recollections fit with Ian's in the most extraordinary way and of course the main person Ian is addressing when he sings this song is Judy Dench, um, uh, and of course they've acted together and they share, you know, a great theatrical past, uh, and 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 so having the kind of these two um, colossi of British film and theatre um, acting opposite each other, talking about through the song about their life in theatre and in drama was 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 moving and very special to me. I've always wanted to work with her, so to be able to get in touch early on in this process and you know have this character in mind, uh, and finally have the chance to work with her and direct her as a, as an actress as well as a singer and a dancer, you know, um, uh, it was it was such an amazing experience. And um, and Idris Elba, you know, again I'm a huge fan of and wanted to work with him for such a long time. And uh, the you know the chemistry between them on set was fantastic. And and Andy, I think, excelled himself, creating an incredible number for, for, for Taylor and Idris, an incredible f storytelling frame for their characters and the introduction of you know, the villain of the piece, Idris Elba. The most extraordinary thing was the, how brilliant dancers are as actors. I mean, Frankie Haywood, you know, who has never been in a film before, never acted, you know, acted on screen in, a, you know, in terms of TV before, she from day one had a total and instinctive command of the film camera and uh, and had an ability to hold the lens which may, which allowed her to stand shoulder to shoulder with Judy Dench and Ian McKellen and these incredibly experienced uh, you know geniuses of their craft and um, you know if you go I went to see Frankie in, a, in Manon the Royal Ballet of the other day and of course when you're stand, sitting 
a hundred yards from her. I mean, I, I, you know, I know what's going on in her face because I've seen what she's like, but you, you, you couldn't know the level of detail and the level of commitment and the level of passion and the, the extent to which she embodies her dance. And so what I found fascinating working with dancers is I sort of expected the storytelling would kind of happen in the wide, but when you went into the close up, it wouldn't be what you were, I was used to as a director, but far from it. When I went in close, you know, everything they were doing in the dance was being intensified in, uh, and expressed beautifully through their face as well. You can never know the journey you're going to go on when you're a child. And, and as I sit here right now, like the hairs on the back of my neck are up, just thinking about how, how extraordinary it is that I, that I could be there as a, as a kid in enjoying the show and end up, you know, years later directing it with, with the creator of it, Angela Weber. And, um, and yeah, how, how, how dreams can come true that you didn't even know were dreams at the time. <laughs>